Oh yeah, I'm here. I had to travel many, many miles and through a pig farm and past the pig farmer guardian and talk to him for 15 minutes, which I left my mic running for. So bonus Patreon content. Um, and I have found this, this Olam stone behind me. So I uh, just wanted to share a little bit. This, this scenery is absolutely gorgeous. The landscape that it's in is amazing. And those are the Comra Mountains over there. Well, misty and shadowy. Shlevenamon actually is not far there, which is uh, both Jarig's uh, fairy court up there. <sighs> it's been a day. It's been a day. So for anybody who's not familiar yet, um, I have an OM Journeys course starting and I do Patreon site visits every month and this is the kind of uh, this is the kind of stuff that you'd be getting not so much in the OM Journeys course but um, I, I suppose I just wanted to kind of show you the, the context we, we get the OM out of context even in the manuscripts and hi Tara, hi Brianna, hi Beth. Yeah, so out of context when we see it in books. Um, this right here is, I don't touch by the way, and you shouldn't either. Um, when you come across a carved stone, you shouldn't touch it because you have oils and acids and all sorts of weird things in your hands that over time eventually will uh, wear down any engravings so I specifically don't run my fingers along the carvings or anything like that because um, I go by a leave no trace policy so apart from leaving a trace on pig farmers who were very uh, <laughs> who cut your hair for you <laughs> it was funny he was funny He's talking about drinking with priests and the state of the church and he doesn't go to church anymore and all sorts. It was really good. Uh, so I don't mind spending spoons to, you know, talk to old boys like that. And uh, he was mad interested in how, you know, the Americans would uh, would want to, not just the Americans, the Irish and the British and anybody else would want to see this, you know, that he has on his land and... He's like, I'd sell it to you. And I was like, mm, no, no, you wouldn't. It's a national monument, so no, you wouldn't. So uh, we got a bit, um, he was like, what would happen now if I knocked that with a tractor? And I'm like, just don't. <laughs> I was like, well, rightly, you should be contacting the National Monument Service and all the rest of it. But you know what? I'm not going to tell you what to do on your land. <laughs> <laughs> I've worked with landowners for a very, very long time, 10 years now. And um, it's not very long, but, you know, 10 years of, of dealing with them and listening to them and all the rest of it. And uh, you um, <laughs> you learn <laughs> not to ruffle the, the feathers. Um, he was talking about one or two. It was the usual, um, no paper crayon rubbing is not okay. Um, you can do that on gravestones and, and that kind of thing, but not on not on monuments. Um, I'll post a link. I'm sure I have an article somewhere about uh, why it's not okay. I can't remember the science behind it, but basically anything like that over time will erode engravings. So you might think by, you know, taking one stone or just, you know, it's only me and, and sure there's nobody else here and it, it's okay if I just do this thing. But Ireland gets like eight million visitors every year every year so if you think now obviously not all of them are going to be you know finding their way through pig farms to come and visit home stones but still like it's the principle of the thing that like you just don't do those things so yeah over time and energetically as well you know for people who are working in a spiritual context with ancient sites and all the rest of it if you're coming into it with an energy of i get to do this 
then that's part of that colonial bullshit I was talking about. It's just that mentality of entitlement. You know, the rules are that for the for best practice, you don't touch the monuments, you don't run your fingers along the carvings, you don't take paper, crayon rubbings, you don't pour acidic wine in offering on a fucking stone, you don't drip wax, you don't light fires, you don't do any of these things that we don't do on sacred sites. I did not mean this to become a sacred sites rant, but it's part of my job as a guardian. Um, so yeah, we don't do those things because flashless camera phones are totally your friend, yes. And even like flash, flash photography is not going to hurt um, a monument, like a stone monument. Um, I think that's for like art and stuff like that, where um, like again, over time, if you have a hundred, a thousand, a million flashes going off, then you know, it's like sunlight on a painting. So I think that's where the, the flash photography is a problem but I mean if you if you're at a monument like this then flash photography is not going to be a problem but like camera phones definitely yeah KV says not for art yeah so I think that's where that comes from um, I I don't know any sacred sites that would be harmed by flash photography um, unless you're like in a space that well this is going to go into a whole like sacred darkness thing but if you're in a space that like in a cave, you have there's something crawling on me. I do go away, Spidey. I got a Spidey friend. Um, I'm gonna put the Spidey friend on the stone because that's not gonna hurt it. Um, yeah, if you're in a cave where it's designed to be dark, not designed obviously, but it, the spirituality of it was in the darkness, then I'd be wary about flash photography down there. And even, like I've done it, but I'd be very careful how I did it and in what context. So if I'm bringing a group down, I tend to not even use a light myself. Um, I know that other people like to use lights because, and I like other people to use lights because health and safety. But once we get down there into it, I make them turn off their lights and sit in the darkness because that's how it was, it was experienced by our ancestors. So, yeah. Flash the monuments, gotcha. Yes, Beth. <laughs> and uh, if, if you want me to guide you while you're flashing the monuments, I'll totally do that. I'm just saying. Anyway, stop flirting with Beth. Um, oh, did I really put that on video? I did. I did. So, hi, I'm your super professional guide to Ireland. Uh, flirting with my friends on your live video chat, which will also go up on YouTube. So, yay. Um, anyway... Where was I before the rants? Uh, oh, yeah, I wanted you to see some of the context. So I'm not even here to like, I showed you the, the Facebook Live earlier. So there's another Facebook Live video about um, the Ohm stones and the carving isn't as clear on this one. But apart from the boy racers going up and down the road, which actually isn't that far over there. Um, I probably could have gotten here easier by, <laughs> by uh, going over by that cottage over there. But anyway, it was an adventure. So um, I'm going to finish up and uh, thank you for watching. And if anybody is interested in taking OM journeys with me, um, I'm going to put a link in the comments below for the registration page. So uh, we will be opening up. We I do the, the course once a year, uh, so that's all. And it, it runs over the course of like 25 weeks, so it's about six months. And it's a pretty deep dive into getting to know the OM individually and developing relationships with them. And it's a lifetime access to the program. So you, according to my other students who've taken the course, um, you will want to visit and revisit the materials again and again and again because every time you do you go deeper and you develop your relationships so that's what it's designed to do so I'm really happy to hear that feedback and 
yeah, if you're interested in taking some OM journeys with me, do sign up for the registration and I'll give you more details about the course program opening. So it's long a full and I will see you in the next video.